Welcome to Pog Lake. We are staying at the Pog Lake Campground at Algonquin Provincial Park for three nights. Come along with us as we show you around this park and let you know what it's like. Pog Lake Campground has around 280 campsites and is divided into three sections. It's a mixture of electric and non-electric sites, and there is a pet-free zone of the park. Highway 60 runs through Algonquin Provincial Park, and all parks and attractions have kilometer markers to help with your navigation. Pog Lake Campground is one of 12 developed campgrounds in Algonquin, is located at kilometer 36.9, and is set in a beautiful pine forest. The water filling station was located outside of the campground, but it was on our way, so we didn't mind. It's 6 o'clock p.m., but we finally made it to Algonquin Provincial Park. And as always, our first stop is getting water. There are two water filling stations here, one at kilometer marker 35.6, and the second one is in the Rock Lake Campground. We visited Rock Lake later that weekend, so here's future Sarah sharing more details on that option. If you decide to come to Rock Lake Campground to use the sanitation station, there is one sewage disposal and one water filling station here. After filling our tank, we headed a kilometer down the road to the Pog Lake Campground, and it surprised me that they only had highway signs, but no campground signs at the actual entrance to the parks. When you arrive at Pog Lake, there is a little campsite office that you do not have to check in at unless you have an extra vehicle that you need to pay for or you're camping in the Whitefish Campground. At the office, you can also get your map, which is extremely helpful, and you can purchase your firewood or ice. There was also a big parking lot for trailers and cars to park while you were at the campground office. The drive to our site was quite bumpy, but we eventually made it and set up. Our site was actually pretty big for our little camper. We are on site 119 in Campground A, and I will say it's a lovely site, but it is kind of open on the sides to your neighbors. On one side, we've been able to block off with our trailer, but the other side faces our neighbor's campground, and that's where our fire pit is, so we can't really get around that. It is a lovely site. It's quite large for our small trailer. We were able to set up our tent so that we can protect ourselves and our stuff from the rain. Site 119 is just on the interior. There are a row of campsites that are along the water's edge, so if you do want a waterfront site, they do look pretty lovely here. After we were all set up for the evening, I walked down to the beach area to look around. It was rather windy and cold, so I didn't stay too long, but it was a beautiful lake and beach area. Then we made some popcorn on the fire and called it a night. The next morning we started our campground tour, so let's check out the park. Campground A has sites in the 100s and 200s, and these are a combination of electric and non-electric. Sites 201 to 232 are dog-free, radio-free, and non-electric, and some of them offer exceptional views of the lake. Campground A has a comfort station with showers, flush toilets for men and women, and laundry services. Here you will also find food locker storages, and these are on a first come, first serve basis. You pay for your key at the park office, and then you can use them throughout your stay. While the laundry facilities, washrooms, and showers at this comfort station were dated, they were kept clean throughout our stay.
I am on my way now to go check out the beach area in Campground A. There are two beaches here at Pog Lake, one in Campground A and one in Campground C, and I'm hoping to get to Campground A's beach in time for sunset, and fingers crossed, it's beautiful. There is a small roped off swimming area here, but it's way too cold to go swimming this time. If you do come during nicer weather, you'll probably want to bring your own beach gear because there are no picnic tables here. So bring your own chairs, beach mats and umbrellas, etc., so that you can enjoy this lovely little beach. Just past site 106 in Campground A is where you can pick up your canoe rentals. There are also many services throughout Algonquin that offer rentals delivered right to you, or you can pick up gear on your way in to use throughout your stay. In Campground B, you'll find sites 301 to 383, and these are a combination of electric and non-electric. And in Campground C, you'll find sites 401 to 473, and these are non-electric. Campground B also has a comfort station that offers laundry facilities, flush toilets for men and women, and showers. There is a notice posted saying that the water here is unacceptable for drinking and must be boiled for at least one minute. And I can confirm the women's washrooms here and men's are clean. Campground B had some great sites for both RV and tent camping. And there were even some beautiful waterfront sites with water access as well. In the Pog Campground, you can also come and check out the dam. It's a beautiful spot to take pictures. <laughs> the old railway bike trail runs through the campground, but it's the only marked trail inside the campground to use. After visiting Campground B, we made our way over to the top of Campground C to check out the waterfront. In Campground C, you will also find a nice sandy beach area. There are no picnic tables here though, just a few benches. So if you wanna come here in the summer, I would suggest bringing your own beach umbrellas and some comfy chairs. It would also be a great area to launch your canoes and kayaks because it is a very gradual slope and just goes out nicely into the water. It is a bit of a windy day today though, so I'm not sure that canoeing or kayaking would be the best experience. I thought the sites in Campground C seemed to be the most private, but these were all non-electric sites. So if you want privacy and don't need electrical hookups, check out this area. Campground C also has a comfort station with flush toilets for men and women, showers, and laundry facilities. And the machines in there looks like they were pretty new. While we were there, it seemed that half of the women's toilets were out of service and the facilities were dated, but they looked clean. The garbage and recycling area is located in a very convenient spot because you can access it on your way in or out of the park. They have interesting containers here. I haven't seen these before on our camping adventures because they open up and they go deep into the ground, which we think is to keep animals out. It's time for my overall thoughts of our stay at Pog Lake Campground here at Algonquin Provincial Park. But before I start, I have to just say, this has been my most favorite camping experience to date. So with that in mind, I'm going to tell you what I liked and what I didn't like about this park. Let's start with the positive aspects of this park. It had amazing Wi-Fi. I was not expecting to have any cell service while I was here, but we had great Wi-Fi throughout the entire park here at the Pogley Campground. 
I also really enjoyed our site. It was nice and big, it was pretty level, and right across from us were sites that were on the waterfront, and those were even more beautiful than our site, and in the future, I would definitely look at booking a waterfront site here. I also really enjoyed that they had clean comfort stations in each of the campgrounds. There are three campgrounds here. They all had their own comfort station. They all had laundry facilities and the washrooms were clean in all of them. Hog Lake is also a non-motorized boat lake, which means it's the perfect place to go kayaking, canoeing, and stand up paddle boarding. Now let's talk about the negative aspects of this park. I had to think long and hard about the things that I didn't like about this campground and I only came up with two very minor things. The first thing is the roads coming into the campground are pretty potholy so it can shake around your items in your trailer if you don't have them secured. The second thing was that it was a little bit tricky to navigate the roads here. They weren't clearly marked so it was unclear if you were going in one specific direction or if it was two-way traffic. Additionally, some of the roads actually looked like they were leading into a campsite and not a road, so it was kind of tricky to find your way, but not impossible and not at all a deal breaker. Because Algonquin is such a huge park, it's pretty hard to fit everything into just one weekend trip. We tried our best to do all the attractions and trails that we could fit in on this weekend, but we're going to have to come back in the future to do the rest. I'm going to share our full experience of what we got up to and the attractions you can't miss at Algonquin in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my stay here. I would definitely come back in the future, and I highly recommend this park to anyone who's looking to come to Algonquin. We arrived at the dump station at just the right time because there are only two dump stations here at Algonquin. They do get busy, and we were able to just pull right in. There was only one van ahead of us that was just leaving and a large trailer that just pulled in at the same time. So we were able to just pull in and now there is a huge lineup behind us. So talk about perfect timing. Anyways, I don't know the best time to come to the dump station, but I would just recommend you plan to leave yourself a lot of time and try and avoid the busier times like the 2 p.m. time slot because you could have people filling up water here and dumping, which would make the line even bigger. I hope this video can be helpful for you if you're planning your own trip to Algonquin Provincial Park and want to stay at the Pog Lake Campground. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more camping and travel adventures coming soon.